Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now I've been showing my layered technique. In yesterday's video we did this one and in the day before's video we did this one and I want to continue with this technique because I'm really enjoying it. So we're going to continue with that and what we're going to do is use the same size card that we used yesterday and highlight how changing colours can make it look completely different. So what I'm going to do is I'm using a four, if we do it this way, I'm using a four inches by six inches piece of card to work on. I've then got a five by seven card blank and then just slightly shorter, so that is four and three quarters by six and three quarters piece of black card just going down by a quarter of an inch from the card blank so that it appears like this exactly like yesterday's card but let's make it look a little bit different so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my branched heart let's take i haven't got the do you know i remembered that i wanted to get a green out and never got it out let's just get that out there we go so we're going to take the branched heart. Let's take that branched heart. I love this stamp set, but I love how with this technique we can combine all our stamps and stencils. And what I'm going to use this time is the little mouse. The Snippet Stencil Mouse SS3. We're going to use our little mouse. So we're going to use the Versamark as we did before. So I'm going to take the Versamark. Just ink the branched heart with the Versamark ink. Just give that a good layer of ink like you would with any ink pad. Now, before I start and I get carried away, let's just wipe over the card with an anti-static bag, mainly because this is a piece of card that has been cut quite a few months and I don't know how long it's just been lying there, but I'm trying to make sure I use up the scraps of card. So I'm going to place the branched heart here and again like with any ink pads I'm just giving that time just to grab hold of the card and leave me a good image no different than if I was stamping with oxide whether I was stamping with VersaFine Claire just give that time to do what it needs to do so I can just about see the image on there you might not be able to but you could see a bit of a shadow there so I'm going to ink again so let's ink that again so I'm we're using the landscape version rather than portrait and let's just give that a really good inking and you can see I don't scrimp on that should you be looking for the Versa mark watermark ink pad i have that in my shop so let's just layer that again and it's the giving it time that really helps there we go then i'm going to stamp Yes, I'm going to stamp another one. Just again, giving that a really good layer. And I can't believe it. It looks like the sun is actually shining. How long that will last? Let's see. Let's then add this 
There. I do talk to myself, even if I'm not talking to you in the video. It's just a habit of mine. I talk to myself when I'm putting things down on the card anyway. So let's just give that a little bit of time just to grab hold of that card. I know one thing I didn't grab was a piece of copy of paper. So there we go. I'm going to grab a little piece of copy of paper. There we go. And it proves how long the ink, because that's just tinged slightly black there, you know, with the ink that's left on the stamp. So let's use my white embossing powder. Whichever white embossing powder you like to use. There we go. And because I've used that anti-static bag, it's just stuck nicely onto where I've stamped the heart. And this technique allows me to use all my stamps, which is which is fun. Right, let's just grab the heat tool. And I'm just going to, as always, just heat that tool up a little bit. Just give that time to heat up. Mainly because as always, as I always say, there's no point going to the card too soon because if the tool isn't hot enough, you're just wafting it for no reason at all. So just heating that up a little bit. So then I'm just going to turn this towards the light. The light's a little bit better today, so that's a good, a good sign. And I hope you're all well. I hope you're enjoying your stamps and your creative time. It. I can see that going now. It's when you put the heat tool and create a shadow, you can't see where you're going. So to try and not create a shadow. So let's turn that card around. Just makes that a little bit easier. And it's quite a reasonable size stamp so we're just making sure that we get all the areas and then once that's melted an area we move the card and the heat tool so that it's not hitting the same area over and over again there we go i think i've got that one Go to the final heart. Okay. Just a little bit more. Just lift that up just to make sure that we, we haven't missed a little area. And it's easy to see when you've missed a little area because it's it's just flat and dull right there one little bit is that everything it's a little bit there so easy to see where you've missed and again i always let that just cool down so just so that you can see that you've got the the heart on there and I always let that cool down because it gets quite warm. So then I've got my little mouse stencil, very well used, as you can see. And then I'm going to place this here. And then like I did yesterday, I'm going to fold my copy of paper in half, mainly because it's got the embossing powder on there. I'm just going to turn this over. So 
will I be able let's move him down a little bit like that there we go and then I've got some fine details so I'm going to use my little blending tool from Tim Holtz and I'm going to use Distress Ink this time, Scorch Timber. I have got these in stock. So I'm going to use the Scorch Timber, the Distress Ink. Now, Distress Ink is translucent. So we'll get some nice translucency from that. So I'm going to pick up the lovely Scorched Timber and pick up that nice layer of ink there. And I'm just going to blend the ink and where you've got these fine areas just sort of brush away so that one's okay just the scorch timber is a lovely rich dark brown and it's lovely to experiment with your colors now there's a beautiful translucent ink hasn't got opaque that pigment in there so it isn't opaque it's very translucent and I can go over and layer as much ink as I wish there we go so let's just lift just look at that oh <laughs> just adore it I absolutely love it right let's grab another piece of card let's just move that out of the way as we've always done and let's take another scrap piece of card that I've got and then let's just spritz this mouse with water mainly because we've done it every other time we've done this and let's just place this down on here. I haven't got no kitchen roll. I try to keep my desk as clear as possible when I'm working. It doesn't last very long, but I do try. So I'm just cleaning my stencil. Oh, I love this colour. So I'm just going to... And how each colour makes everything look so different there you go i've now got another piece of card i can create another project from and it nicely cleans the excess away from my stencil now i hope you don't mind indulging me in this technique because i love doing it now i've decided how i'm doing it i just i love it i love doing it so i'm going to bring in my card again just make sure that's dry, which let's just dab it onto that card. It's a little bit damp. So then I'm going to place my little mouse exactly as we did before. Let's move him back a little bit. There we go. And then I'm just going to place my copy of paper on this side, mainly because then I don't touch. And then I'm going to use my Distress Ink Scorched Timber. So just... And with the fine details, just brush away. Just with the fine details. And then just blend that rich colour just over your stencil. And this little blending tool works quite nicely with those fine details so just and you can keep just adding the color for richness but it's translucent so you can see nicely through that oh just lovely i know let's just add a little bit more to those little feet so put it back again Sometimes it takes you a little bit just to get it in exactly the same spot. So let's just add a little bit more ink to his little feet. That's better. There we go. So again, you can, let me look at that. Again, you can 
try to take another print of your stencil if you wish you can take another print of that and then you've got more background to work on i'm just going to give that a little dry i'm just going to waft i'm not going to do anything too much now i'll wipe over just to now you can use your brush to wipe over like i showed you in the previous video or you can just use your kitchen roll and just use a little bit of water and then you can just wipe over just to remove the little areas where you've got the white embossing you can move remove your ink and when you've removed the ink just remember to move your kitchen roll around there you go and you can see you remove a little bit of ink just to give that brightness right i'm then going to use some greens so i'm going to use let me see if i've got them in my ink so So I've got the mowed lawn in the ink. Let's just place the oxides. Let me see if I've got the twisted citron. So what I'm trying to encourage you to do is use your products. Don't leave them lying around. And the only thing I've bought here is my new colour, the Scorch Timber. So I've got Twisted Citron and Mode Lawn. I'm just going to grab my little brush like we did yesterday. Now I'm going to make sure that that brush is clean because... I know I use several colours. I'm going to use Twisted Citron from my Distress Ink. So pick up that Twisted Citron. And these are translucent, but you'll also find with the Distress Inks, they're a little brighter in their translucency. I have to say that Scorched Timber is just yummy you can blend it out to nothing and i'm not i'm trying to not touch the sort of brownish mouse just so that we just keep that clear do you know i enjoyed this bit i find it so relaxing i really do so i'm using the twisted citron at the moment and where you get quite close to the mouse just use less water and then it makes it so much easier in that you don't flood the area. So it makes it far easier for you. And then when you've got the larger areas, you can go over, especially if there's no mouse nearby, you can go over quite easily. You don't have to take as much care. And what we can do 
if, if you've gone over, like on this one, the little um, whiskers aren't as prominent on this one. But that doesn't matter because I can go over that again and add the whiskers again with my little blending tool. Let's just... Blend that out. So I can use a little bit less water when I go near the little mouse. There we go. Just pick that up, turn it round. Let's put a little bit more of that twisted citron. Just so you can, there we go. So we have our colour on there. What I'm going to do is let's just wipe that up a little bit. And then I'm going to take the mowed lawn distressing. It's a little bit darker and I'm going to give a little bit more depth. Because I'm using the greens, I don't need to sort of wash my brush. I'm just going to add a little bit more darkness just closest to the edge. Just give that a little bit more, more depth. Just blend that out. So just sort of going a little bit closer to my little mouse now and just bringing out the depth with the darker green. And I don't worry, I can go in and just reiterate the whiskers again, no problem at all. Just, just giving that a little bit. And then when my brush is almost dry, sort of scratching out the colour, just to give a little bit more darkness. I do enjoy this bit. I do love this bit. Let's just pick up a little bit more darkness. Let's add a little bit more of that ink. We'll just... And you can tell if you've got a little bit too much water near the mouse because it sort of floods. You want it to be reasonably dry okay so you're just picking up the darker mode lawn and i'm using pink front card whichever is your chosen card make sure that it can take that moisture so i've got the darker color around there then we'll go back to the Twisted Citron. A little bit more water. And just sort of blend out any of those harsh edges that you might have. Just sort of blend those out just so that you, it's like you would just with your pencils, you're blending out the harsh edges with the secondary colour. Just to blend those out. So let's just 
bend our card but just give that a little bit of a dry now don't dry it too much because you've got that embossing on there and you don't want to dry that out too much or else you'll affect your embossing and just be aware of that so what i'm going to do then is i'm just going to take my little stencil again And I'm just going to take the scorch timber and just sort of re-put in my um, whiskers. There we go, that'll be fine. And then you can either use your kitchen roll. I've got an almost dry baby wipe here. These are just water ones and I can just wipe off anywhere where I've got some ink on the embossing just to bring back that nice bright white. Let's have a look. There we go. And then where I've got a little bit of brown here, let's take a little bit more of that twisted citron. And let's just blend that with the twisted citron. Make sure, yep, lovely. Now, if you're not happy and you want more depth on your mouse, you can go in again, no problem at all because all you do is keep wiping over the embossing. So if you want, you can take, you can lose your embossing tool. Have I just, oh there, it's just rolled over. You can even add more depth of color, should you wish. You can add more depth of color. To your mouse again because all you do is you come back again with your wipe or your kitchen roll and you just wipe the areas that have got the embossing. It's so simple. Let's just wipe that mouse again. Just take a little bit of kitchen roll. Just mop that off. Then I can do exactly the same with my little mouse here. The hardest bit is actually getting it lined up exactly the same as you did before. I can then go in and just reiterate again the depth of colour by adding more of that colour. So it's entirely up to you what you want to do. Again, where the mouse goes over the embossing, I just wipe that area and it just removes that ink because the embossing resists the ink so that you get just this just lovely i absolutely love that just love it and then like we did yesterday did i not pull that down i thought i pulled that down. oh i have pulled it down just like we did yesterday we'll go around with our Ink tense pencil, just for a little bit more depth as well. And you only need to touch a little bit of the area with the ink tense. And obviously, you've got more embossed areas with this because you're using that branched heart which gives you a little bit more of that embossed area with a little bit more of the detail and again you don't worry if you go over the embossed area because you can just wipe that 
So let's just clean that because we've got that green on there. So again, just clean again until that runs clear. There we go. Take off the excess water and then you can just touch the little bit of a mouse just to give a little bit more of that definition. Just touch it. Don't touch too much because you've got that brown in there. So you don't want to add too much of your grey. So you're just sort of touching just to soften the edge a little bit. There we go. But you don't want to do it too much. There we go. So then we can spritz our card with water just to get some bleached out areas. But you just need to give that a couple of seconds just to get your bleached out areas. And then we'll just give that a little waft with the heat tool. There we go. Just so that you can see that. And it's as if they're sort of in the woods, really, don't it? It just looks fab. So I'm just going to um, then find what word have I got here? On the branched heart. I have peace, calm, breathe, and I think we'll have peace. Just to add to our card, I need a little scrap of card. I always just need a little scrap of card. And I've never quite got just a little scrap of card. Let's just heat underneath this card just slightly so that it bends the other way. And you can see I'm holding it quite a way away. There we go. So we'll just take our black ink, our Nocturne Versafine Claire, and we'll just add the piece word. Like so. Let's just place that back, she says. Not able to find where the word comes from. Move that out of the way a little bit. Just cut our word. And this will pop against our background because we're matting and layering it on the white as well. That'll pop nicely. And you can see I'm putting words on there that are not, nothing too overpowering. So let's just bend our card because it permanently wants to bend the other way. So let's just bend the card a little bit. And we'll just add the word peace here. Let's add our adhesive and I'll just put shading around with my ink tense pencil. Or I will no, I will add a tiny little bit of my black posca. And I'll sort of lean the posca away from the card a little bit more because this is a smaller piece and just sort of kiss the edge of that card or you can completely miss it and just sort of that's it you're just sort of kissing the edge of the card so that it's not too thick 
of an edge. That's better. So then we'll adhere that. Place this here, like so. Just give that time. Now, you don't add too much detail because you want this to really sort of stand out and stand proud so that it really works with the project. But I'm going to add another little detail to this. So let's just grab my pen have I left it out or not let's hope this one works so I've got a quickie glue pen let me just check that my quickie glue pen actually works there's always one oh actually to be fair it does work so what I'm going to do is I'm sort of going to add little touches here and there just in the mouse not not anywhere else just little sort of touches here and there little tiny touches and I'm just going to add little touches of gold leaf to the inside of the mouse which you know is, is just totally difficult to actually photograph so you probably won't see it in the photograph but you know what it's like when you try to photograph these things so just and because I'm adding such small areas the gold leaf will attach quite easily now, you can tell if you work off the cuff because then you have to reach for more products. So I've got a little bit of gold or what colour is this? No idea, but look at that. Do you like how it goes everywhere? That's what happens anyway when you use any gold leaves or whatever. Now... Try not to use sort of big lumps because it's not going to work because your quickie glue pen, I've only added very light layers of the um, quickie glue pen. So you just need to be aware of that. You've only got fine areas of stickiness so you just need to be aware because you've just placed sort of dots on there let's just tip off that excess and because I've got so little on there I don't have to worry about sort of burnishing it and you know because it, it's just such tiny little bits let's just place this back waste not want not It's great because I always I always create myself a little bit of hoovering, you know, while we're doing these projects. Let's grab a clean piece of kitchen roll. No special tools. Just a clean piece of dry kitchen roll. And I'm just going to just give that a little bit. Let's move that out the way. Let me just lift that which you can imagine is not going to show up in the photograph when I do it. But just so you can see, there are touches of the gold on there. So it's really nice. Just gives it a little bit of opulence as well. Right, where are we? Let's just 
Let's just place this back. Place this little heart. Well, it's not exactly a little heart, this heart back. And then I'm going to take the little hearts on the branched heart, place them onto my small acrylic block. Let's grab that piece of card that we had spare. And then we'll use our black ink. And just stamp those onto my piece of card. There we go. Just remove that now. Then we're just going to cut the little heart out. There we go. Nice and easy to cut out. Just add my little heart. Let's add Let's just go, that's it. And I'm just going to add a touch of white to that heart. I will hold it up so that you can see what I'm doing. Let me lift this up. That's easier said than done. <laughs> I told you it was easier said than done. It's because my hands are sticky. I've added a little touch of the white to the heart. And let's just a little bit of adhesive to here and we'll just add that little heart there and I won't add any shading yet just to give that a little bit of time to dry there we go get rid of that bit of debris and then I'll just add some splatters With my white pen and I do love the green and white let's just pump that pen a little bit just get that flowing a little bit more bit of a wipe because I'm trying to be good and wipe everywhere let's move this out of the way so we can actually see what we're doing now let's add this to our black mat and it instantly pops against there so let's add that to our black mat just pops nicely just against there. Now, just like with the previous card, it wants to fight against you a little bit because it's it's sort of, you've got that moisture in there. So you just have to be a little bit more patient and just give that some time just to grab hold of the card. Because I want to add some more splatters across the black as well. So let's grab that again. But I don't want to just do it yet. Let's just make sure that we've got... There we go. Just add a few little... There we go. Now, as I always say, you shouldn't really be trying to stick your card onto your card blank when you've got those wet splatters. So I've now got my five by seven card blank. There we go. Let's place that just on here. 
Let's push that up a little bit, a little bit more. And this is why I like using a wet ink because it just, once it's grabbed hold, it's permanent. And plus I can maneuver that a little bit as well, should it not be in the right place. So I can add a little bit of shading around here because that won't move now. And then a little bit of shading on the heart. Now let's make sure that we're not working with any green and it's definitely the grey. And again, I'll just kiss that with my brush just slightly and then dab off the excess little bit of shading around the heart. There we go. It always looks lovely when it's been matte and layered onto the actual piece. Let's just move that just so you can see that. It always looks better when it's matte and layered onto the piece. And I absolutely love that. So I hope you enjoyed the demo once again. And I'm going to be back and doing it again, definitely, with the hair. So love to all, and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.